we get started with today's video, I just want to give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service to empower each and every person to express themselves through scent. It's a vibrant community of fragrance aficionados and beginners, all brought together by their belief and power of scent. And Scentbird is your fragrance destination. It's a single place to discover, learn about, explore, and just experience scents just for you. And one of my best memories with one of the scents was me and my fiance were about to go out on a date, you know, just go out on the town. And I was dressed up, I looked good, she looked fantastic, but she said, there's something missing and I don't know what it is. She walked out of the room, I went ahead, grabbed one of my scents, sprayed it on. She came back and her eyes got big and she went, that's it. Perfect. It was a great way to kind of close out the look, close out the feel of the night. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every single month for just $17. Every month you get to pick what you want to receive so there are no surprises. They have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. With each fragrance you get a 30 day supply so you can try out fragrances before committing to a full size bottle. That can cost over $150 and some can go for $300 to $500. And if you look at one of the cases, it's extremely easy to use. Use. All you have to do is switch the lock on, spray, and you're good to go. And you can actually see how much you get in just one of these bottles. It's actually pretty fantastic. So it's really great that they can actually show you how much you get in each sample. Line everything back up. Good as new, ready to go. For this month, I tried scents such as Versace's Dill in Blue, the Burberry Brit for Men, and Dolce & Cabana, the one for men. Once again, thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. And head over to Scentbird and use the code THATDB to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's THATDB to get 55% off your first month. Once again, thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video and check out the links in the description below. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in the Hyundai Elantra Inn. Now, you're probably asking, why are you driving an Elantra? Why? Well, because I think this car is a perfect representation of the turning point of Korean car brands. Arguably, my favorite one that has come out from Hyundai pretty much ever was the Veloster N. And I was told, David, if you like the Veloster N, you gotta drive the Elantra N. Basically, the Elantra used to be a very cheaply made car uh, from Hyundai and it was just to get you from A to B. If you needed a car, you just go buy it. Then the cars got nicer and nicer over the years. And with Hyundai attempting to do sports cars like the Tiburon, didn't work out so well. But then finally they did the Genesis Coupe, which basically took the world by storm in a lot of ways. It was an affordable rear wheel drive sports car for mostly young people, right? Young people could afford it. And if they couldn't afford the Mustang or anything like that, they would go get the Genesis Coupe. The Genesis Coupe felt a lot like a 350Z, 370Z type deal. If you look at the Veloster N, it's a big turning point because I argue the Veloster N was almost just as good as the Honda Civic Type R of the same era. And it was a lot cheaper. You could get it from under $30,000. Now with the Elantra N, same engine, similar power numbers, and this makes 276 horsepower and 289 foot-pounds of torque, but if you hit this certain button, you get 10 more crank horsepower, which I'm sure you could totally feel. Probably not, but you know, but Dino doesn't lie. But now, with the N brand, you know, after they stole that BMW engineer, they literally just changed everything. They have the Kona N and the Veloster N, which sadly is now gone. They finally ba basically gave it the boot because it had its time. Unfortunately, I don't think it sold as well as they hoped. Very much like the Kia Stinger, which is a very much relatable car to the Hyundai brand. First impressions of the Elantra N is the interior. It is absurdly nice for the money. You have suede, Alcantara, a giant screen, but you know what I like about it? It's not overbearing. What's really interesting about it is that you have your gauges and everything right here, like you normally would, speed limit, all the things you need to know. But then on your right, you have, you know, all the other gauges, your oil temps, your engine temperatures, all that good stuff, but it's a connected screen. Typically, it's two separate screens, but it's just one screen that keeps on going. So it just kind of makes sense. Like, why make two pieces of glass? Just make one big piece of glass, right? Oh, there it is. So if you stay in first gear, second gear, right at 4,000, that's how you get the purple too. What I matter 
is this also has the DCT transmission. They do, believe it or not, make this car in manual. I'm sorry if the AC is on, if you can hear in the background, it's burning up today. The Elantra in manual is such a cool idea and that car weighs like 3,200 pounds, somewhere around that. The DCT weighs about 100 pounds more, but the DCT in this has rave reviews and I kind of want to see how it does at full tilt. Okay, yeah, what's really, okay, yeah, so the turbo, you can actually see it. It's right in the back of the engine. And a lot of people take the Elantra N turbo and they put it on the Veloster N. Is that the Integra? That's the new Integra. No, it's not. That's how you know. It's not the new Integra. It had basically the same front. Perfect segue. I think this car is basically what the Integra could have been. New Integra, the main mistake of that car is comparing it to the DC2, right? That car should not be compared. If they released the Integra and said, hey, listen, times are changing. We made a four door instead because this is just how things are right now. Sorry, but this DC2 had its time. No, they had the nerve to be like, yeah, it's just like it. Absolutely. No, the Elantra N, as a direct competitor to the Integra, this is a nicer car. I've seen the Integra interior in person. I like this more, which is bananas. And sure, do that, does the Integra come with a manual? So does this, so you can't make that argument either. turbocharger in this spools up pretty quickly this car is front wheel drive but as with a lot of front wheel drive systems this does have an electronic limited slip differential so it's barely noticeable anyway that all kind of started with me with the new civic type r where when you drove it any other time other than hitting a bump when you were on full you know full throttle it basically felt like it was all wheel drive it didn't really matter there's a bug trying to get me right now Okay, interesting. So first gear is like, hey dog, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this right now from a roll? Second gear, it hooks up and it really starts ramping in that power, really starts ramping in that turbo. Where's traction control? I don't like you right now. I was expecting the auto to be kind of like one of those scenarios where you hit the paddle, it takes like a beat, and then it goes to the next gear, but no, it does its job very well. So let's talk about the styling. It's very divisive. I've asked a lot of people about it. You either love it or you hate it. I love it because it's so quirky and weird, especially the rear. The rear has this really odd geometric shape, right? It, I can't even describe it. To film this car was super weird because it had this gap. When you look down the back trunk, it's just this kind of triangle thing going on. It has a wing on the back and it's an Elantra. The front has this kind of fish looking thing, but I like it as well. I'm gonna try this again with everything off. Let's see what happens. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, it tells me the foot pounds of torque, sick. The steering wheel is very nice. All your buttons you ever need are right here. I guess the first time you look at the wheel, you'll be like, what does everything do? But once you get the hang of it, it's a very nice steering wheel to hold in your hands. Nice leather material. Big back seat too. The LSD does a very good job of having this thing hook up. Also the wheels. The wheels are this very modern, intricate looking saw blade kind of deal. Got the red calipers too, cause you know, sports car. And at the same time, Braking's just fine for this car. I don't think you need any bigger brakes for this. Has cameras everywhere. The lane assist, all those kind of driver assists are all standard in these cars. At the same time, you can get up to a 10 year warranty on this thing. That's another advantage that Hyundai has over its competitors is their warranties. They have incredible warranties. Also, when you're in the shade or in the dark, you can see that you can change the interior lighting color. And also this in on this race style seat lights up very much like a BMW M4 and M3. I wonder where that, you know, I wonder where that idea came from, but it looks very nice. I actually like the styling of the stitching, the color schemes. This blue is very nice. They actually have a really pretty blue for this color, this color, nice. They actually have a really pretty blue for this car as well. Oh, that's 
2-3. Yeah, the 2-3 is very good. Well, found the limit. Basically, on the corners, would not recommend traction control off. If it was rear-wheel drive, yeah, no big deal. You just kind of let the oversteer happen. Wouldn't matter that much. Front-wheel drive, you're like, I don't know where this is going, but I'm along for the ride. <laughs> but yeah, it essentially, thankfully, was easy to catch when it did lose up front. There's not much more to say because the Elantra N does its job. The Elantra N in its price segment, with its competitors, with everything going on in the brand of Hyundai, this is fantastic. The manual has to be a hoot, absolutely. The Veloster N is definitely more of a rowdy boy racer kind of feeling car. This one is a great daily driver while also having some spunk to it, if you could put it that way. Yeah, on that note, has turbo noises, great four cylinder engine, makes uh, some cool exhaust noises, has a very comfortable interior, has a great warranty, has a good power band and good torque. Well, and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of the Elantra N? Put it down in the comment section below. And I upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Have a wonderful day, Elantra.